founder and partner of the global consultancy firm Finding Butterflies. Some of her client projects include the new global partnership with the Montessori St. Nicholas Group in the UK and Vodafone Global. Tessie is also the newly appointed associate at LSE's Ideas at the London School of Economics. Her commitments to education can also be seen in her foundation called Professors Without Borders that brings top-level educators and global experts to the doorsteps of students worldwide in order to develop international talent. Moreover, Tessie is an ambassador for UNAIDS and is the patron of UNA UK. She has spent five years in the Luxembourg military, during which time she was deployed in Kosovo as a peacekeeper and the only woman in her draft. Tessie actively promotes a number of issues, including global health and women's rights. She's passionate about pushing her different agendas to benefit the sustainable development goals and has committed her time and energy to furthering the work of organizations in which she believes. Moreover, she is actively committed to strengthening basic human rights for all and empowering young women and adolescent girls around the world. She has received numerous awards, including the Woman of the Decade Award from the Women Economic Forum in January 2017, the Humanities Medal for Spreading Humanistic Ideas Worldwide, and the Global Empowerment Award for her work in Africa. I am very honored tonight to award her yet another distinction. Uh, and uh, allow me to please present you, Tessie, with an honorary doctorate of fine arts from Paris College of Art. Dear Dr. Chua, who introduced us in the first place, and especially a big hello to all of you graduates of the class 2019. It is truly exciting, isn't it? Dear graduates, you are future leaders who have traveled from all over the world to come and study here in Paris, one, I believe, of the most beautiful capitals of Europe. We have graduates from Europe, the Americas, Middle East, Africa, and Asia. We are all here today to celebrate you, your work, your achievements, your ambitions, your future. So for me, from the bottom of my heart, congratulations to all of you. I graduated um, from my bachelor graduation and my master's graduation. I was excited that it's finally over. The exams, long class hours, essays and thesis writing, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I am totally with you. And yet, I was also anxious of what would come next. There is the fear of the unknown, yet be assured that there is always someone you can count on, yourself. In my personal history, when things went really wrong, and trust me, they did, I realized that being true to myself helped me overcome almost everything. In the end, you are and remain your best friend. My address to you will be split into three parts. The first one will be a short example of my life experience talking about the importance to be true to yourself. The second one will be the importance of being different. And most importantly, not be afraid to be so. 
and also the importance of embracing challenges in times of uncertainty. And last but not least, my third part will be a personal message from me to you and a key message in that. So, I'm 33 years old and I'm the mother of two teenagers. Often people say that I have lived the life of a 90-year-old woman, which always makes me smile. It's all in the concealer, right, ladies? <laughs> in these 33 years, I was six years in the military, did a trauma psychology certification, launched my own company, I'm working with UNAIDS as a global advocate, and was married for 12 years into the royal family of Luxembourg, and much more. The selections of my titles were princess, corporal, defendant, activist, mentor, and teacher. These titles were only a byproduct of me following dreams, of things that I thought were true at that time. What I learned is that titles can change. However, the true me has always remained within. A title tries to categorize you into one of the boxes, but being really true to yourself is the real essence of life, which puts your actions into harmony with your belief systems. For example, as Dean Linda mentioned, Professors Without Borders, my foundation, I launched it three years ago with two co-founders. It is my answer to the brain drain from developing countries by developing quality education at home instead of abroad. Also, often students cannot access that quality of education. So we bring it to them, customized to the geopolitical social issues of the regions we work in. Inside my heart, I felt the wish to provide every student with quality education and that no student should be deprived of it. Doing this, I knew it would not always be easy. After work, after taking care of my two sons, and after taking care of my household, I sat down and worked on Professors Without Borders. I felt the urge that the world needs it. I felt the injustice in the educational system and knew that these incredible students also deserve the best. So I took my courage and did it. I was true to myself. This short example has illustrated that whenever you have an idea, and already what I have heard from Dean Linda with all of the different projects you have presented yesterday, it's really if you really feel it in your heart that it's worth fighting for it, that there's a way to make that idea come to life. I am personally already extremely excited and looking forward to hear about your future successes when they happen. This brings me to my second part of this address. Dare to be different and don't be afraid to be. When I was 16 and a half, I came home after school to find my dad sitting in the kitchen telling me that I was to join the military because it offered so many opportunities in his view. Terrified, yet a bit excited, I thought to myself, I have two possibilities here. Either I accept and I do it, or I decline. However, I always lived life that, in a way that I believe nothing happens for nothing. Therefore, this was clearly meant to be in some way, even if I could not understand it at that moment in time. So I accepted the challenge and joined the military at the young age of 17 years old, together with my twin brother. Not sure who was lucky, he or I, probably I was. It was a tough beginning. No sleeping, bleeding feet, constant screaming, and loads of running around in the hedges and valleys of beautiful Luxembourg. I lost my gun once, which resulted in me having to carry a truck wheel all day. Or I also managed to shoot my twin brother twice with fake ammunition, which resulted in me needing to drag him all over the floor and digging him a hole. Yeah, this really happened, and he loved it. We're still laughing about this. The boy to Kosovo as the only woman of my draft with hundreds of men from different countries, was also one of these incredibly rewarding experiences. 
However, the real life lesson for why I joined the military unfolded when I met my ex-husband after deployment while checking his eyes for his driving license. Romantic, huh? Therefore, in my opinion, would have not joined the military, accepted the challenge, overcome my fear of failing, which is often the one thing that really keeps you behind. I would have never met the father of my two beautiful princes. Sometimes embracing the unknown can unfold to be the best thing that ever happened to you. Try it. Hence, my third point, and last one, I, won't, I don't want to keep you too long, and life lesson to you is, is to be true to yourself, as well as to embrace your destiny. The irony in that, savvy, you know, there's always a hook, is that the gift in life is to know when, why, and what. And that, only you know inside you. No one else can decide that for you. Trust in yourself. Feel it, listen to yourself. Be curious and be engaged. Always know what is happening around you and take care of your friends and your family. I'm really humbled to have been given the opportunity to address you all today. Brings me back to my graduation, it really does, and how I spent that special day. Think about tomorrow. What will you do? How do you wake up? Where will you go? But most importantly, who will be with you? I hope that my three short points inspire some thought, but also ease a little bit of your fear of the unknown. Life is definitely a roller coaster. It means it has ups and downs. We can't change that. So my suggestion to you is buckle up and lift your arms to feel the tickles in your tummy with everything you do. Please don't be a stranger and keep me updated with your fabulous work. I have social media, as all of you do, and I'm really looking forward to hear from you. If there's anything I can personally do for you, don't hesitate. I have around 200 mentees at the moment, and I always am happy to hear from you and your friends. So congratulations again to all of you. Thank you for listening to me, and have a good celebration tonight.